So now we're going to talk about how to thread up your sewing machine. Now, the way in which you do this varies hugely from one machine to another. Uh, I'm not really going to uh, talk too much about what you do for specific machine X or Y. I've got a brother and a singer to demonstrate with, so you'll at least get a general idea of what you're meant to do. But essentially, if your sewing machine is not threaded up properly, it can cause problems with you trying to sew. So one of the very first things that you should do if you're having any kind of difficulty with your sewing machine is to make sure that you've actually threaded it up properly. I can testify on many occasions that I have not done this when it's been late at night and I've been rather tired um, and it has caused me problems. And the first thing that I found out was that it was entirely my fault because I hadn't threaded the machine properly. So first things first, your thread sits on the spool just like it had before when you were threading the bobbin. And this time, on the thread guide at the top here, we're going to be using this part of it. And then you can see the little picture here shows you how to do it, which is kind of handy. So essentially what you're wanting to do is to get your thread, pop it underneath the thread guide here, and then just get it into the little dip. And then when you pull it taut, There you go. Okay, so I just get that on top of here so you can see. Um, there is a tiny little wire. There we go, you can just about see it there. If I pull this cotton, you see that little wire moves. So that's actually providing a little bit of tension between the spool of cotton and the thread guide. So sewing machine tension is hugely important. Um, and therefore there's lots of little bits on your machine to help enhance that. So the basic point of this thread guide is to change the direction of the thread from vertical to horizontal, which is what we've done here. So it then sinks into this little hole here. So this goes all the way down the sewing machine, all the way down. And you can see there's a little number thing here. So number three tells you to bring your thread around and up. And then it goes into this bit here. Okay, so what's the point of doing that? Why even bother doing that? The reason for it is because inside here is a set of tension discs. Now the tension discs grab hold of your thread and they keep it nice and taut for you. If it was too saggy and loopy, then what would happen is that the thread would get all snarled up in the sewing machine when you're trying to sew. So it's important to make sure that there is some tension on the thread, but the amount of tension that you need varies according to what fabric you're using and what cottons you're using. So because of that, you have some tension discs embedded in here, which can be adjusted using this dial here at the top. So you can see it's got like a little kind of volume indicator and that just tells you how much tension you need. So that's at zero, but you can go all the way up to nine. Let's stick it in the middle for now. We'll talk more about tension later. So, your thread goes from the spool to the thread guide and then down through the tension discs and then it goes all the way up again to the take-up lever. So you can see the take-up lever in here. When I move the manual operating dial on the sewing machine, it moves. So this, this lever, the take-up lever, grabs hold of your thread and pulls it up and down according to the motions of the needle at the bottom of the machine. So your thread must go through this take-up lever. If it doesn't, it will cause all kinds of problems and make you incredibly sad. So one of the most common reasons for having difficulties with your sewing machine is because for some reason the thread has actually fallen out of the take-up lever. So that's just something to check when you are having difficulties. So. Having done that, this actually goes back down again, the thread. So you can see for number four, it tells you to put it through the take-up lever and then loop it back down the way it came. So it's now going back down, back down, back down, and it's coming out the bottom here. So we're at the final stage of threading up. So here, there's actually another needle guide. It's not showing up very well. Let's try and get that to the side. There's a little bit of wire just there, and your thread goes through that, and it just provides the final angle change that you need to get the thread to the needle. Okay, so you've got your sewing machine needle here, 
as you can see it goes up and down when I move the manual operating lever and it's a forward facing needle so the needle eye is facing towards me when I load it now some of the sewing machines have a side facing needle in which case you would need to thread it sideways so just be aware of that so I'm now going to thread the needle which is a pain in the bum so I'm just going to turn that off for a second. and that's the needle now threaded so when you have a forward facing needle you need to make sure that the thread is going from the front of the needle to the back if you do it the other way around then it will tangle inside the sewing machine which you don't want the other thing to be aware of is that sometimes you can end up getting a little bit of a loop in the cotton and it will actually get wrapped around the needle so again if you're having problems just check to make sure that that hasn't happened because that's quite a common thing to occur sometimes um, so to go on to what happens next you've got your top thread all threaded now so if you were to start sewing with this all of the stitching would just fall out you would just be able to pull it straight back out again so the point of having the bobbin thread which is coming through which will come through from the needle plate here is to make sure that there's something to actually catch those top threads when they're being sewn and hold them in place so that's the whole reason why you have a bobbin thread because otherwise nothing would stay together so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to actually load the bobbin that we loaded before into the bobbin case so to do that you have to remove this this lets you access the bobbin so this is the bobbin casing here so inside here lives this this is your bobbin case so this just fits into your bobbin holder here like so so you need to make sure that you've actually clicked it in properly if you haven't clicked it in properly you can see the little handle thing at the top won't actually stay in place it will just flip from side to side and be completely useless so if that happens what will actually occur is that your needle will collide with the top of the bobbin case so the top of this and it will snap which would be sad times so don't do that just make sure you clicked it in before you start so all we're going to do is we're actually just gonna pop this bobbin that we just loaded before into here okay now the way in which your bobbin loads will be different according to which machine so just check your manual in the case of the brother sewing machines um, the bobbin when you pull it it needs to turn anti-clockwise to the direction of the thread it's a lot easier if I just demonstrate so here on this side you've got a slit You've also got a tiny little bit of metal here. So your bobbin thread needs to go through that little dip in the bobbin casing. It then needs to go underneath that metal plate, like so. And then it comes out of the slot at the side here, and that's your bobbin loaded. So. When I pull this, the direction of the bobbin is turning that way. When I pull this thread, this way. So that's how I know that the bobbin's loaded correctly. So it turns in the opposite direction to the direction that I'm pulling on the thread. So just to go over that again, your thread needs to go into that little slit there. and then goes underneath this bit of metal and then comes out of this slot here. Once this is done, you can then pop your bobbin with the cotton in back into the bobbin race here. Click it in and that's you done. So the last thing that you need to do is you need to actually get this bit of thread here through the needle plate at the top and have it coming out at the back here. So what you need to do is you need to grab hold of the thread at the back here so this is the one coming from the spool at the top of the sewing machine you then need to use the manual operating dial on your sewing machine to bring your needle down through the needle plate and then that pulls your thread through so once the needle's made a complete journey through the needle plate and back up again it will have hooked the bobbin thread underneath through to the top and this is basically what is happening when you're sewing so the bobbin thread and the upper spool thread will get hooked together by the bobbin race at the bottom here so if we have a little quick look at that 
when I operate the machine, there's a part here that moves. That's called the bobbin race. So that will move when you turn the dial. And then that is what pulls the thread above. So if I were to actually hold on to these threads while that was happening, to give it a bit of tension. Now, if you have a look really, really carefully, you can see a line of cotton coming across the front of the bobbin case. Now that's normal, that's exactly what your machine should be doing, and this is how it loops the top thread and the bottom thread together. So what's basically happening here is that this is, this is the top thread, so if I pull that, it, it comes loose. So that loops around your bobbin case, and then goes back up over the top of the bobbin case off, which is that bit at the top there, and that's how a stitch is made. So if anything happens that, to that process, you're going to get problems when trying to sew. So sometimes what can happen is that the bobbin become the bobbin thread becomes tangled around the central spool inside the bobbin case. So sometimes if your tension is wrong or whatever, then thread will become looped around here, which of course will cause everything to get stuck. So having demonstrated that process, you now know that if anything goes wrong with that, that can cause difficulties. So you're now ready to sew. And here's the example of a threading up process for another machine. So this is a Singer, it's very old, it's cast iron at the bottom, it's very heavy. I don't use it that often, I mainly use it for um, things that the I want finer control for. Um, but it is a slightly more heavy duty sewing machine and it can handle slightly heavier fabrics than the Brother can. So to thread this one up, again you've got the top spool here and the thread goes to this thread guide here. So this thread guide basically takes the thread at an angle and then turns it to the horizontal. Um, at the top here is the, um, the button that's used to wind the thread around in order to thread the bobbin. The bobbin change mechanism is here. So having gone to the thread guide, it actually goes down into the tension discs. Now these tension discs are actually on the front of the machine, you can just see them here. So it's not that sophisticated a system, but it does the job. So this thread goes down through the tension disc and then back up and then it's got this little bit of wire here. Now this basically does the same function as this bit of wire on the, uh, on the brother. So that bit there, it does pretty much the same function of just helping to keep the thread tension going. So when the take-up lever, which is here, so again the thread goes from the tension discs down and up to the take-up lever and then back down again. Um, when this is pulled taut you can see that that bit of metal lifts up and down accordingly just to maintain that tension. And then we've got another thread guide here. So the fabric goes down from the take-up lever to this thread guide here. And then there's a final thread guide on top of the needle. As you can see, it's just here. So it goes through there and then you can thread it through the actual needle itself, which is just here. So this is a forward loading needle again. So the needle, the thread goes from the front of the needle through and to the back. But the interesting thing about this Singer sewing machine that I've got is that it has a top loading bobbin, which I will just demonstrate just now. I'll just get the wire from the brother out of the way. I've got the two sewing machines quite close together on the table. So the top loading bobbins do not have a bobbin case. They just sit inside. And I'll just demonstrate how you thread this up. So you just drop your bobbin in like so. So it just sits in there, so it's got no dedicated case that you remove or anything like that. And then there's two little notches, there's one here and one here. So this goes across and then into the first notch and then it goes underneath the metal part, like so. And then it just rests in the second notch and goes over the top of the bobbin like that. So that's a top loading bobbin. And with these ones, you don't really need to do anything much to adjust the bobbin tension or anything like that because everything's designed to be a snug fit, which again emphasises the need to make sure that you've got the correct bobbin for the type of sewing machine that you need.